Hi folks, welcome to episode 22 of my Terra Firma Craft, the next generation playthrough. Uh, so in the comments for the last episode, Sebastian Kaufman pointed out that you can tell when animals have gotten too old, like by looking at their eyes. So you see these guys all have black pupils. This one over here has gray pupils. She's too old and that's why she isn't giving any sheep. So... So you know what that means. That's right. Mm. Lamb's back on the menu, boys. Uh, another thing that was pointed out in comments, uh, this time by uh, the drew for you uh, Let's get some of the stuff on my inventory here. Is if I crouch, you'll see that these guys, their heart has a red border around them. Now it should be white. I'm not sure why it's red here but red or white doesn't matter uh that means that they're already familiar enough that i don't have to feed them like if i if i stop feeding them they won't lose familiarity so i can stop feeding them which is great because we need the uh the greens for other things and this guy is pregnant right yeah this guy's pregnant so same cannot be said for the cows over here so if we come and look at the cows you can see they both have black pupils in their eyes. That's great. Uh, and if I sneak on them, I'm pressing the shift key, sneaking. Uh, you can see the heart has black border around it. So these guys aren't familiar enough at all. So let's start getting them going. And I want to get them bred as soon as possible so they don't get too old on me. So I want to stick around until, um, until they're familiar and pregnant. Well, at least the female is. I'm not going to wait around too long for the male to get pregnant. Okay. All right. The other thing I wanted to have a look at here was I've made up uh, some vinegar here. So let's grab some buckets. We'll grab a bucket of vinegar. Grab that chest, or chest. <laughs> grab that barrel as well. All right, so we're gonna go get ourselves a barrel of salt water. And you can see here, the fresh water stops here it's a lighter blue the salt water is a darker blue so that's a, another good way to tell and let's put this barrel down and we'll start filling it three four five six seven eight nine now if we fill it to ten the next thing we're going to do is put in this vinegar bucket to this salt water and a bucket of vinegar will make brine solution if we fill it to ten there's no room for the bucket of vinegar so we only fill it to well we filled it with nine buckets worth which is nine thousand millibuckets and then we add the one thousand millibuckets or one bucket as it were of uh, vinegar and that gives us our brine solution so let's seal that up so we don't lose it when we pick it up great run back over here okay uh, let's put our brine bucket down there now, some food to brine. Not that we're short of it. Uh, what would be good? We have 24 onions, my gosh. So let's see. Um, when you're brining stuff, you need a thousand millibuckets per 16. So we have 10, so in theory I can put 160 vegetables in it. Well, not necessarily vegetables, it could be meat as well, but we'll go with vegetables. So let's find something we've got a lot of. Um, 
25 carrots, 24 onions. Those potatoes I have another use for. 10 garlic, 20, oh, lots of garlic. All right, garlic's the winner here. We're going to pickle a bunch of garlic. Well, we're going to brine a bunch of garlic. This whole brine, this whole process for preserving food using pickling is like really freaking complicated. It's way more complicated, I think, than it needs to be. Okay, so it all has to be in one stack. So we'll do this. Combine them down to one stack with the usual problems with this combination, combining operation. Okay. Come over here, open up our barrel of brine, and we will stick the garlic in. Okay. And as you can see right now, the garlic will decay in about 44 days. Um, I don't think the brining by itself will change that. We'll see. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Um, eventually we're going to need, like, I've got these barrels stuck here, but I'd like a separate space for them. So what I think I will do, since I have to wait around anyway for the, uh, to finish the film familiarization with cows, I think I will build us a few things. Build us a structure. Uh, use maple beams, maple logs, and sequoia maybe for the roofing. Let's try that, see how that works out. And where's the saw? There's the saw. Make a bunch of support beams. Okay, now... I think... Good place would be about here. And you can have a gap of four between them. One, two, three, four. So we'll put the other one up here. And put up a cross beam like that. Um, you'll notice if you haven't used the beams before is uh, the minimum height for um, the first beam you set down is three. So that takes three out of your total automatically. Same on this side. And then the span across the top is <clears throat> however many it takes, of course. And uh, it'll again, it takes those automatically out of your inventory. So you don't have to place each one individually. So similarly on this side, one, two, three, four. I don't want to put a span across there though, just for aesthetic purposes. Um, gonna need to. Ah, where's my where's my shovel? Whoops, a little bit too deep there. Hear you. All right, let's uh, put that guy there. Put a beam across there and a beam across the back. So this is going to be the front, and uh, and I think uh, I think I'll should I just put a flat roof on it? Well, let's see what happens here. Um, get rid of the beams for now. Take some of these sequoia logs. Okay. Really? Oh, for half slabs, I need a I, I need a crafting bench. Actually, let's hit the sack. No point doing things in the dark if I don't have to. Ah, uh, let's get something to drink. Okay. Right, so for plank blocks are like that, right? Right. Now that's not very many. Let's do the rest of these guys then. All right, that's a goodly number. And I'm going to need a few.
few logs for scaffolding. Okay. Okay, if we just put them down flat, how's that going to look? Yeah, I'm not going to bother putting walls on it and closing the sides. I just need a place to store all those barrels while I'm. Once we have all the. Uh, well, we're going to have like vinegar and we're going to have booze and we're going to have brine and we're going to have stuff that's pickled. So just need a place to stack up a whole lot of barrels. So hopefully this will work. Anyway, so let's go back a bit so we can't see. The, yeah, we can still see the gap. All right. Let's fill in the gap a bit so we can get a an idea of what it's going to look like. Man, you can still see that gap, eh? That's too bad. <laughs> Guess I'll just have to finish the roof off. Eh, it looks a little boring, but then, but then don't all of my constructions. Okay, well, this is the shed. And it's also time to go feed the uh, cows. So let's do that. Oops. All right, we will give them one of those and one of those. Oh, I got to bring some. Uh, that's another good reason not to be out gallivanting around is because I want to collect uh, more fruit from the lemon tree. <clears throat> Need that fruit to make vinegar. Okay, guys. So they're still, just in case you didn't notice, they're still black bordered, so they're not familiar yet. Yeah, let's stop and collect these. So there's room for more fruit to come in on the tree. And there are two more. Uh, let's get our logs back out. There's another one over here, actually. Can I get them from the side? Yes, I can. Excellent. Okay, and that's all those for now. Let's go throw them in a vessel so they don't rot on us. Oh, that one's full already. Let's start a new one. Okay. Uh, actually, is there anything more to do here? Oh, I need to dig out back here. Uh, I was going to say I'll do that off camera, but really, for now, that's all I need to do. So that's fine. And then we can move our many buckets out. Or buckets, I, meh. Barrels. Barrels. So, must remember to seal them all. That one's already sealed. Okay. Um, we went to bed, and so it's a new day. So enough time has passed now that if you have a look, it says that this garlic is now brined, and it'll still decay in 43 days. So the brining itself doesn't add any, any time to it. Okay. But still, let's seal that barrel up. Now, what we need to do... 
Uh, where shall I do it? I'm going to need to make some vinegar. So this is the most, you need alcohol to make vinegar. So I'm just trying to figure out whether, uh, so for every thousand millibuckets, you need two grains to, uh, to make alcohol. So I would need 20 grain. Do I have 20 of any grain here that I can afford? Not really. Barley. What do I have over here? I have 10 rice grain there. 11 wheat grain here. Oh, there's corn coming in though. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, some of the animals don't like rice. So we'll definitely take this rice grain. Oh, but we can't mix and match, can we? Ah, that's right. It all has to be the same, just all of one type. All right. So let's empty this, empty this guy out. So we have 10, so that means we can do 5,000 little buckets. Two, three, four, five. Okay. We will dump our 10 green in. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, never mind. What I am doing wrong here is I need to put flour in, not... So we have some flour over here, just one cornmeal flour though. Okay. Um, we'll speed through this. I'll do a like a time lapse on this or something. Grind these 10 rice into flour. It should allow you to do something like, you know, shift click and then it will grind all of them at once. Instead of having to sit through this. Okay, now we have 10 rice flour. Boom, yeah, we'll get sake. That's what I was expecting to see. Okay, so that will give us sake. Sake. Um, let's start moving stuff out here. This is vodka, rum, brine. Oh yeah, just did that. And then this is gonna be the sake and they're all sealed, right? Yep. Okay, well, let's get them moved out then. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Better put one of these down. I can't jump when I've got more than one barrel on me. Okay, so that's a booze barrel. another booze barrel. Let's sleep through the night. Uh, don't have our sake yet. That's working on being a booze barrel so I guess we'll add it to the same stack except it won't fit there. So this will be booze corner. It's fine. And this will be brine. Should probably make the barrels out of different wood so they're easy to distinguish. I mean, I was playing and putting signs on them anyway. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna get hungry and thirsty. What do I have to eat here? I'm not gonna eat raw mutton. Okay. And let's have a loaf of bread. And a carrot. Sounds good. Oh, I should probably eat these blackberries. Okay. Let's finish drinking. Okay, so that's all of our barrels taken care of there. Um, we can see that our 
more of our yellow peppers are coming in. All this barley over here is getting close, but still no cigar. I should check to see if there's any other fruits come in on these berry bushes. Nope. And I don't see anything on the lemon tree either. So let's get some grain for the cows. And actually, let's take a bucket with us this time, too. Uh, here we go. We'll see if we can milk them this time. Okay. Okay, so they didn't turn white yet. So I don't, I shouldn't be able to milk them yet. Which one is the... You are. Ah, but I can. I didn't think you were supposed to be able to milk them until they were, uh, like, properly familiarized. But still, that's fine. I think that happened with the goats, though, too, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so I shouldn't be surprised at that. Oh, here's another bucket, actually. We can, uh... Yeah, this is another thing that's kind of annoying. Well, here, I'll show you. Take a bucket of milk out. And seal the barrel. Okay, so from the outside, sealed barrel. I can't. There, I just threw the milk away. Great. But I can't put milk in it, right? Let's uh, unseal it. Take a bucket of milk out. And now, so when it's sealed, I can't put anything in from the outside. And when it's sealed, I can't put anything in from the inside. So I come in and I unseal it. Okay, great. Now I can dump milk in. No, it doesn't work in here. Now you have to get it from the outside. So if you if you like me, you like keeping your barrels sealed so you don't get rainwater in them. Although it probably doesn't matter once it's got something else in it. But still, you know, I'm trying to be kind of somewhat realistic with this. So it means that to put a barrel, a bucket of milk into one of these things, you have to come in here, unseal it, get back out, put the bucket of milk in, come back in here and seal it again, which is kind of ridiculous. So it was actually easier before when you could just, when you came in and you could do everything inside the interface. All right. So we can now milk the cow, but we can't do anything else with it. I'm beginning to see very quickly that this is not uh, going to be big enough, this shed. Oh yeah, something else I want to do with these support beams. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to remove some of these. Okay, let's go over here and get some dirt. A couple of people in, in various episodes have commented on my using logs to have support beams because logs are so much more expensive, right? You can make like eight support beams out of a single log. <coughs> or sorry, out of two logs. Um, and this is why I do it. So... Yeah, I really do need to remove this guy here, too. Um, actually, no, I don't. I just need to go up one. Okay, so you can see I can put these here. Oops. I can put these... I'm too close to it now. I'm using dirt blocks as an example, but stone will work as well. Just need to back up so that it doesn't hit me when it falls. Because yes, it will fall. Ah. Okay. So it will support... Um, uh, it will support dirt and rocks and stuff like that and stop it from falling if it's 
within the range of just one above the beam. So you can see the beams here, and this is just one above it, so these don't fall. Um, but if I place one on top, look at that, eh? So one, one more above. So two above the beam is not secured by the beam, which would be fine, but it all, but when something falls through, the beams don't stop it. They will continue to fall. So what will happen is, fine, you can put these beams up and the rocks immediately above aren't going to start a, an avalanche, avalanche? No, cave-in. But, but if a cave-in starts higher up, then the rocks falling down on that will still come in, crush your skull and take your ore away. So that's why I don't use beams underground is because I want something that really protects me, not just sort of protects me. All right, so there's our barrel shed. Actually, I should probably pave it in here because so the grass doesn't grow up. Sand, sand would be good. Do I have enough sand? Do, 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 do. I don't have any sand. Oh, man. Hmm. Well, there's sand out there. And there's sand this way, too. So, what's the time? Eh, we've got enough time. Let's go do this. Put down a nice sandy floor. It's nice having iron tools. They uh, work a lot quicker, and particularly on the sand here, they just whip right through it, which is nice. And probably another high speed. Probably do this at high speed. Oh! Okay, I mean, it makes sense, I guess, that the support structure comes down when you do that, but I wasn't expecting it. So you can't remove the ground from underneath the support beam. Like I say, it makes sense. Uh, I'm doing this in the dark again. All right, let me go inside. Pass the night away. I've got the bed now. Got to make use of the bed now that I've got it. All right. Except now, of course, I'm thirsty. Oh, let's eat that to get it out of the way. And See how loud the drinking sound is? Now listen to my footsteps. Here, you'll hear them bear up here. Or in here. So I'd like the footstep sounds to be louder, but they're both tied to the same uh, the same option, which is I think player sounds. I know I'm getting distracted. Oh, not controls. Sorry. Uh, music and sounds. Players. And so I can't I can't get the feet louder without that sipping sound getting a whole lot louder. So basically sipping is just too loud. It shouldn't be that loud. That's what it all boils down to. Well, I'm glad the uh, barrels don't break apart when the ground under them disappears. Alright. Wow, I actually don't have enough sand or do I have another stack here? Probably have another stack, yeah. Grass got in the way. Oh, yeah, these are missing.
even though they're going to get in the way, really. Like the, if I didn't put them in, then I could stack barrels one higher. But still, I just I like the looks of it better. It gives it more of a structure to puts gives more structure to it. So that's that. All right, now we get to go feed our cows again. Run on over here. We ignore the sheep. Bah, yeah, bah, do you want? All right, let's see. Does this get you to the familiar point? There we go. See? The white room appears. Oh, and then right away they get the light making on. That's what I like to see. Yeah, this is one thing that I have to actually have food in my hand to be able to shift click and have them tell me it's the cow is pregnant, but I'm pretty sure the cow is pregnant. Great, so they're familiar, so I can stop feeding them my grain. So that seems like a good place to end this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you back for the next one. Bye.